right, right, right. We got Luka Doncic is about to break the NBA with this. What? After last season, the Dallas Mavericks said fear exists that Luka Doncic will request a trade in the summer of 2020. I don't think that's the problem anymore. He's throwing lobs to Kyrie. Kyrie hitting game winners. Or if Dallas does they not like contenders. significant. Not good enough to beat the Clippers, but contenders. Progress by then. Since that report, Luka's frustration has been more and more obvious. Technical foul, I believe, by Luka. That's what he said. This is it. He's lucky he wasn't thrown out. Luka's still complaining. Here comes a second defender. Luka picks up the dribble. He finds Seth Curry. Bobbled ball. Shatters away and blocked and the game is over. The Mavericks lose the game after leading by 20 points. Yo, could you even said this too. He said, yeah, Luka ever gets mad in Dallas, he come to Denver, man. Lose the game after leading by 20 points. We'll give him Jamal and some other people. Jones lets her rip from the corner. Oh, my. What just happened with Chris Dunn and Luka? I didn't do nothing. He's just mad. I'm going to do this came after to end the 2023 season. The Mavericks decided to bench both Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic in a move that both of them completely disagreed with, and Luka's frustration has continued to grow right in front of our faces. We have seen this pattern before. A young star who has tremendous success in the NBA, but his team is simply not cutting it, and then that young star leaves around year six or seven. If you don't believe me, here are 10 recent players who have left their team within seven seasons due to the fact that they either wanted their own team to star on such as Kyrie or T-Mac or Kawhi <laughs> or because their manager Kawhi. failed them he was already a star demanded a trade in year seven LeBron James and Chris Bosh both joined the Miami oh, Heat uh, did year screen. seven Vince right. Carter demanded a trade during year seven and Chris Paul in year six where we are with Luca demanded a trade that ended up seeing him pair with Blake Griffin in Los Angeles he's gonna go to the Lakers so it don't count time is running out for the Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic and we are certainly going to get into the Mavs failures but first what's up Mike here and we need to talk about how at this point in time Luka Doncic is being shout out to the Mavericks fans they want some of the most loyal fans in the NBA guys, I want to thank NBA loyal supporters Infinite for sponsoring <laughs> Trophy. And the hype is real as star player Carl Anthony Towns is gracing the game as the cover athlete with veteran announcer Mark Jones providing play by play commentary in game. So, guys, click the link in the description down below to get in the game with NBA Infinite. The game is a lot of fun. Again, go click the link in the description, download NBA Infinite, and for now, let's get back into the video. Because of his team's failures, the media has been poking more and more into Luca's game. We've heard that perhaps players do not want to play with Luca because he's too ball dominant. However, per the website Crafted NBA, Luca creates 18.4 open shots for his teammates per 100 possessions, a number that tops the NBA over Tyrese Halliburton, who is an NBA all-star with the reputation for being one of the most willing passers in the game. Kyrie Irving, a man who has a reputation himself for certainly being outspoken, has said nothing but great things about playing with Luca. Jalen Brunson was recently seen being best friends with Luka Doncic at the All-Star game. In fact, none of Luca's past teammates other than Kristaps Porzingis have had a problem with him as he gets them more open shots than anyone else in the league while also providing absolutely historic levels of production. Does Luca have the second highest usage rate in the That's the cover 2K22 right here. Look, this the cover. Anyone else in the league while also providing absolutely historic That's the cover NBA 2K22 right here. Or levels of production does luca have the second highest usage rate in the nba this season yes that is a number that is justified because when luca has the ball he is playing at a historic pace this season luca is averaging 34.6 points 9.8 assists and 9 rebounds per game only two players have finished a season averaging over 30 points 9 assists and 9 rebounds oscar robertson who achieved this four times in the 1960s and russell westbrook who won the mvp for these types of numbers luca though has seen seemingly been penalized for his instant success as while in just his second year he finished fourth in the MVP voting with 28.8 points 8.8 assists and 9.4 rebounds per game as a 20 year old it was his second season where he finished highest in the MVP voting this is despite the fact that Luca has made four straight first team all NBAs in his first five seasons something that in the post merger era only three players have done Luca Tim Duncan and Larry Bird Luca is doing things we have almost never seen before 
or as Duncan and Bird were on NBA juggernauts. The Celtics and Spurs were teams that won championships and were always in contention during those time frames, while Luka has been on questionable roster after questionable roster, and because of this, he has not finished higher than 5th in the MVP voting since his second season, and he was just 8th in the race last year. Nothing is worse than feeling disrespected when you are playing at a historic pace, while people continue to poke at your game because your management is letting you down. At this point in time, the Dallas Mavericks are both not contenders this season, They're not? they have absolutely zero chance of ever being contenders, they unless don't? something wild and crazy happens, like he start playing some defense, huh? decides he wants to come to the Mavs. Even with the addition of another all-star caliber player in Kyrie Irving, the Mavericks this season are currently 8th in the NBA with a potential play-in game looming against the Los Angeles Lakers or Golden State Warriors. Even if you the think you don't think they can beat the Kings in a plan? to win the playing game it is Versus the kings you can beat them in the playing very likely the that kings they will take a first the warriors round exit this the 2023 warriors bro beat the kings if you lose a 2023 war you can lose to anyone bro yeah i gave it was like 2015 2016 2017 warriors, but 2023 warriors 2024 warriors you lose to them you're trash Season, aka they will have not made significant progress on his end luca has tried his absolute best again there has been one player that has had a problem with luca and that is Kristaps porzingis who himself admitted he was immature during that situation i'd say it went both ways there but the results ended up speaking for themselves as after porzingis was traded to the wizards in 2022 luca proceeded to lead the mavs to the western conference finals with a starting lineup that included jalen brunson now an all-star for the new york knicks and then dorian finney smith jalen brunson 20, 22 points per game in the playoffs? Bullock and Dwight Powell. In 2024, Smith is averaging under 9 points per game, while Bullock and Powell are averaging under 4 points per game. Luka's 2022 playoff run was the definition of carrying a team on your back. As in the playoffs, his stats were spectacular with 31.7 points per game, 10 more than Brunson, who was second on the team, while Luka also led the Mavs with 9.8 rebounds, over 4 more than anyone else, and 6.4 assists, almost 3 more than Jalen. Play yeah, more rebounds. Dang, he was doing everything. He also got a legitimate, historic, do not poke the bear moment. As in round two, Chris Paul and Devin Booker on the Suns openly mocked Luca after they took a three to two series lead, to which Luca. Everybody at the top when they up. Everybody at the top when they up. is absolutely putting on a show here. Luca would follow these words up by dismantling Phoenix while literally laughing in their faces as he did so. But somehow after making the Western Conference Finals with one of the best young players we have ever seen, Dallas decided to let Jalen Brunson walk away for nothing. Something that Luca clearly did not agree with as we saw on JJ Reddick's podcast. Did you have any idea Jalen Brunson would be this good? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Why? The way he worked out every day, coming back in the afternoon, you know, it was just amazing to play with that guy. And while we did hear at the time that there might be chemistry issues between Brunson and Luca, Jalen Brunson himself has told a completely different story. There were two times that I thought we had offers on the table before the season, and then around, I think, December or January. And I think he said this on, uh, 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 I think it was JJ Wright's podcast as well. Right in the world to do so. I don't blame them. Not the one with LeBron, but his, the one by himself. On them, and that is on them. The Mavericks are paying the price right now. Yeah, that's Curry rubbing his back. <laughs> A lot. As for the 2024 season, the NBA set their salary cap at $136 million. For the 2025 season, the Mavericks already have $171 million committed to players who are obviously not getting the job done. Tim Hardaway Jr. has been awful. He is averaging 16 points per game on poor shooting numbers and is contributing no rebounds and no assists. He also he's a scorer. That's what he's like a ball. He's like a... Norman Powell. And this wing defense, which possibly is Dallas's biggest weakness. He takes bad shots. Every shot he takes is a bad shot most of the time. A lot of people are pointing so he's not passing. Kid this season. He's a Dallas Mavericks head coach. That is very understandable, and I don't think he's been doing a good job. The players his management have gotten him, though, are simply just not good enough to compete at a championship level in today's NBA. Josh Green has regressed this season, averaging less points per game while his shooting has dropped from 53.7% last year to 48.8% this year. And looking back, 
back at Crafted NBA, we can see he is also a negative wing defender. Green is owed over $45 million. Gafford, PJ Washington, and Maxi Cleaver are owed over $11 million until 2027. These are not trade assets that can get any type of star from another team. And the Mavericks have locked themselves in financially so that they are not able to get a big time free agent. Even in NBA 2K, this would be difficult to pull. Didn't. Mike, you sponsored to buy. I got something better. You sponsored to buy. Mishy Beatty? Mishy Beachy? I ain't know it still make Mishy Beatty. I ain't know you had one. Off. In real life, it's near impossible. And when we look at the Dallas Mavericks track record of decisions, Luka Doncic should run away from this situation. In 2019, reportedly, Harrison Barnes mid-game is being traded to Sacramento for Justin Jackson and Zach Randolph. I remember that. Would have been a he got traded mid-game. Early 2010s, Justin Jackson Crazy. did nothing of note before the Mavericks moved him for James Johnson, who also did nothing of note. Meanwhile, Harrison Barnes did the impossible. He helped the Sacramento Kings make the playoffs. At the very least, he would have been a positive player on the recent Mavericks teams, and he's he a champion. Ain't a, a champion. Trade piece. Continuing on in 2020, when Seth Curry was in his prime, the Mavs traded him to the Sixers, where he was a big piece on a team that finished first in the Eastern Conference for Josh Richardson, who did nothing of note before they moved Richardson for Moses Brown, a man who averaged three points per game. The Chris Ops Porzingis trade actually did become a silver lining for the Mavs as they landed Spencer Dinwiddie, who helped them make the Western Conference Finals, <laughs> and then they were able to trade for Kyrie Irving by using Spencer Dinwiddie as one of the main trade pieces. However, I Dallas got Kyrie. combined this decision with the decision to let Jalen Brunson walk instead of locking him in to a four-year, $55 million extension. Per Bleacher Report, it was an offer Brunson's camp would have accepted if the Mavericks made it. So in all honesty, would you blame Luka for demanding a trade? If you look at the current roster, if you look at the Mavericks track record when it comes to making trades, and you consider the fact that Luka is just at this point wasting away years of his prime, I will say I would not blame him at all. And so if the Mavericks fears do come true, if Luka Doncic does request a trade in the 2024 season, then the question becomes where will he end up? In the NBA, we know one thing for certain. When a player demands a trade, he controls the situation in a way that the franchise does not like. If Ben Simmons can control his destiny after demanding a trade, <laughs> we said Ben Simmons can control his destiny. Anyone can. That any team would be able to trade for Luca, but the reality is, Luca says, "I don't want to go there. I won't try if I go there." What team's going to trade for him? It would make you no pull James Harden to go from an. You think Luca gonna pull James Harden to another team that was on the borderline of making the playoffs? He would only demand a trade to go and win a championship, which means potential trade candidates that have the assets to trade for Luka, such as the Orlando Magic, Sacramento Kings, Houston Rockets, Atlanta Hawks, and Utah Jazz, would all have to trade away too much to keep a contender going. In the case of a team like the Rockets, there is no contender at all. It's also very unlikely that the Lakers or the Warriors are going to be able to pull off a Luka trade. I would Why not? say that would be incredibly entertaining to see, but the Lakers would have to try. able to move Anthony Davis, which seems unlikely. And as for the Warriors, even if they did move Clay or Draymond green i don't think the warriors have enough to make this trade i don't think jonathan kamega or brandon pojemski are the guaranteed all-star type talent that dallas would be looking for in a trade in which they give away luka Doncic, one of the best young players the nba has ever seen a luka Doncic trade would have a very very high price tag on it and i would say there are four teams that are able to make this trade better than anyone the new orleans pelicans are in this group but they are the least likely by pelicans are in every group bro these got a little bit of everything they're just annoying they got dudes that block your three pointers. That's not Zion. They got dudes that hit threes. That's not Zion. They got dudes that's just annoying that you use the mid range pull up jumper. Agreed. Like it's the 90s. It's annoying. I'm betting on Zion Williamson as his wingman for the future, which I'm rooting for Zion. I do hope he continues to succeed, but I'm also watching how things play out there because Zion's past has been troublesome when it comes to weight and staying on the court. If Dallas does love Brandon Ingram, though, and Herb Jones, it could happen. Moving up in terms of likeliness, if the Denver Nuggets take a bad playoff loss this season in an early round, they could very well look at the Oklahoma City Thunder, see a team that is young and on the 
rise and decide to shake up their core and possibly move Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. for Luka, something that Luka and Jokic just joked about while playing in the All-Star game. With that said though, I will say the Nuggets seem very unlikely unless a really bad playoff loss happens and they need to first round exit. Everything. Which means I think the two like 2015 Spurs, bro. The they were the champions the year before. They ain't lost in the first round. The, the year after. Antonio Spurs and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Victor Wembanyama and Luka would be a pairing that might not be championship ready next season. However, they would certainly be set up to run the Western what Conference. The the no, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, helmet pop. Went pop too. No. To the hype. It's gonna ruin the NBA. Antonio has several picks that they can trade. It's gonna be like Tim Duncan all over again with Tony Parker. Year, including their own as they are currently the third worst team in the NBA which would mean Dallas would be able to rebuild through the draft and the Spurs entire roster would essentially be available in this trade I'd imagine players such as Devin Vassell Jeremy Sohan and Keldon Johnson would be moved with again a lot of picks but speaking of a lot of picks no Oklahoma City Thunder are in a position to top the Thunder any offer and they have waited to trade for a big time star the Thunder would immediately provide Luka with a championship ready contending roster as the Thunder would be able to keep Shea Gilgis Alexander and Chet Holmgren while offering the Mavs a plethora of picks alongside young players such as Jalen Williams, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort. Don't Lou trade him. No, 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 no. Don't trade him. Don't trade J J Dub. J Dub is nice. Isaiah. This would be cheating too. Don't don't do this. Don't do this. It'd be cheating. Hey, Joe, they have a lot of young talent to trade. They have a lot of picks to help rebuild the Mavs roster after giving away Luca. And I would not be surprised in any way if the Thunder do make a run at Luca if they lose in the playoffs this season. A big three trio of Shea, Chet, and Luca would be a young big three that would compete for NBA championships for the foreseeable future. The Thunder without Luca this season are already second in the Western Conference and could win the Western Conference after Carl. Anthony Towns just went down, which means if they were to add Luka Doncic, again, little soon, Cat Anthony Towns. He is one of the best young players we have ever seen to their roster. Well, that is an incredibly scary thought for anyone who is not a Thunder fan. If we were speaking of potential NBA dynasty, that's why I want him to go there. Chet I want him to Luka. go to the Thunder or Spurs. That's off limits. He can go to the Knicks with Brunson. He go back and play with Brunson. I know everyone welcome him. Stephen A. Smith would welcome him. My opinion, a dynasty to come. But I want to know what your opinion is down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, comment below. Do you think Luka does demand a trade this offseason? No. And if he does, where is he going to end up? I'm interested if he does, in the comments as next. much as possible. Really excited to see what you guys say. If you are not already subscribed, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss another video. If you're already subscribed, thank you for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. And if you're... But now the Mavericks been rolling. Shout out to the Mavericks. They've been rolling. They beat the Nuggets. They beat teams that they're supposed to beat. They look like they're going to be in the playoffs this year. You know, Kyrie and Luka in the playoffs are going to be problems. They're going to give you problems. So shout out to the Mavs.